Om Gyananjivanandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksha Militam Yena Tazmai Sri Gurave Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Srivasani Go Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 this initiation marks the formal enrollment in the Academy of the Holy Name, chanting Hare Krishna. And as we explained this morning and before, that part of this ceremony, which involves vows, means we accept what real human form of life is. And the other part is the transcendental part, the chanting of Hare Krishna. We've already explained that the four regular principles that they vow to follow all their life don't make you transcendental, they make you a human being. And then it's the Hare Krishna mantra that on such fertile soil sprouts the bhakti lata, the creeper of bhakti sprouts. These devotees are dedicating themselves to a lifetime of chanting Hare Krishna. And they're understanding that through all circumstances, the vows they're taking accompany them. Hopefully they've thought about it very deeply and They're committing themselves. Any relationship that's serious requires commitment. Just like we had a couple of couples here celebrate their engagement, which is the beginning of a commitment of togetherness and bhakti. So commitments do mean something. And initiation is the commitment to dedicate yourself for chanting Hare Krishna and avoiding sinful activities. The vows will give you strength. We've often pointed out that just like on a long fast day, such as Janmashtami or Gaur or Nima, you may be hungry. You may see others eating, the little kids eating. But you remember that the vrata, or the vow for that day is to fast until night. So in that way, the vow helps you. Otherwise, we can surrender to the mind and be very whimsical. And the more that we indulge in our mind, the more wrecked our life becomes. These devotees taking initiation, first initiation, need your support, need your advice, need your guidance. And they should bear in mind the 10 offenses to chanting Hare Krishna which, as you often point out, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, all the offenses can be avoided just by paying attention to your chanting. And that can be a challenge, no doubt, in our life. Especially those going through family life, they have to deal with family affairs, children, working, and it's so easy to set aside your vow to chant. But if you understand the potency that a vow brings to your life, you'll take shelter of that vow and through thick and thin go on with keeping your promise. 
And we have one person taking second initiation, which means knowledge and the teaching and distribution of knowledge to present to the world real brahmanas, real spiritual guides with wisdom and the behavior that evidences that wisdom is such a great contribution. This is the tip of the iceberg of a real human society that we're doing here. We have to start somewhere from scratch, gradually building up a real human society, which is based not on just economic expansion, but based on the need for human beings to purify themselves to such an extent that they get out of the material world and back to Krishna. And as you become more experienced in transcendental knowledge, you'll learn expansively about back to Krishna. There's a vast science of what back to Krishna is all about. What happens in Vaikuntha, what happens in Goloka Vrindavan, what happens in Krishna's Manifest pastimes, Boma Leela, all the information is there. And gradually you'll realize how insignificant material existence is. Here we are on a tiny planet amongst countless planets in a small universe. But so much is beyond our sensory perception. The only way you can understand what is beyond your sensory purview is by hearing. And depending on the source of information you're hearing, that will determine the progress of your life. This Hare Krishna mantra is actually the sound of Krishna's flute. Chaitanya Charitamrita describes that when the gopis would hear Krishna's flute, no other sound could enter their ear. And that sound of the flute dominated totally, 100% their consciousness. This is how we would like to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> With such rapt attention. When you read about the Prema Sankirtan in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Lord Chaitanya's associates chanting and dancing. Naturally, you think, when will that day be mine? And that's good. That aspiration is noted by the super soul in your heart. So what may seem totally impossible to attain begins to be attained just by your having that sigh, that silent sigh. Oh. If one day I could be like that, that's how everything begins. <laughs> the potency that's contained in bhakti activities is beyond the range of calculation by ordinary sense perception, ordinary intellectualism. Lord Chaitanya once left Jagannath Puri and was visiting various devotees who lived on the bank of the Ganga. And then he returned to Jagannath Puri. And there was one particular place which is now a northern suburb of Calcutta. And this is the residence of a very surcharged bhakta, very surcharged devotee. And this devotee so, was so attached to reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. So while Lord Chaitanya was there 
at his house, the devotee began reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, and the potency was so great. The potency of his recitation was so great that Lord Chaitanya began to dance in ecstasy, losing all external consciousness just by hearing this Brahmana read Srimad Bhagavatam, especially verses about devotional service. He kept reading, and Lord Chaitanya kept dancing and urging him, read on, read on. <laughs> Mahaprabhu was manifesting all kinds of ecstatic symptoms, roaring, falling on the ground, collapsing, picking himself up, lost in an ecstatic trance just by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. This went on for how long? Nine hours. <laughs> so we don't know the depths of what is possible by these bhakti practices of chanting Hare Krishna, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, and so forth. So these devotees who are taking first initiation, this is considered their real birth. As the Shastra says, you can have a mother and father in any species of life, <laughs> but only in this human form of life do you ch have a chance to get a spiritual father and Veda Mata. The, the Vedic literature is considered the real mother. So we want to give these devotees taking initiation all facility for achieving maximum success through thick and thin. And material life in the material world means thick and thin. It's not that devotees never meet with adversity or misunderstanding or impediments, but as long as they stick to their vows and the bhakti process, they'll pass through the impediments, the misunderstandings, the obstacles. Life in the material world is an obstacle. Don't blame Krishna for that. But you have the means to pass through the obstacles, whether physical obstacles, mental obstacles, social obstacles, economic obstacles, environmental obstacles. So we pray that these devotees will remain attached to their vows and indeed make their life perfect by going back to Krishna, which is completely possible. It's up to them. Everything is now in their hands. <laughs> and we ask for the help of the assembled devotees to Give them encouragement, good advice, progressive advice, and in that way, their journey back to Krishna will be successful in one lifetime. This point, our acharya has always emphasized, you can do it in this lifetime. You can also delay it, but you can reach success after just this present lifetime if you're very serious. So now we give their names. has been in what we call the contemporary Vedic Ashram. 
which is a place for young men to find themselves in their footing and decide what ashram they want to pursue. You've been there how long? Almost two years. And I believe you're thinking to go to the Brahmacharya ashram? Yes. Did anyone force you? <laughs> Somehow there are some devotees that have notions that uh, they must be, someone must have forced them to go into the Brahmacharya ashram. Otherwise, who would want to be a Brahmacharya? <laughs> Well, <laughs> some men do consider their freedom. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Also, I always point out that there are four ashrams, and all of them are meant to produce spiritual advancement. It's simply that some ashrams are cheaper than others. <laughs> so you'll be joining the Brahmacharya ashram when? After the festival. After the festival. <laughs> appreciates those going to the Brahmacharya Ashram because as we read in the first canto of Bhagavatam, the Brahmacharya Ashram is the best training place for the attached and the unattached. In other words, for those who may be staying for a couple of years and then going to household life, still the Brahmacharya Ashram is the best situation for training in how to control your mind and senses. And for those who want to go the whole life in the Brahmacharya Ashram, it's the best training place for them too. And many of the ladies have noticed that when men go through the Brahmacharya Ashram and then decide for family life, some of them do, when that happens, these men are coming out as first-class cooks. <laughs> so the lady can be sure that she's not going to be the only one who knows how to cook. And that's a big thing, right? <laughs> so from all angles of vision, it's a win-win situation. <laughs> Everyone benefits by men going to the Brahmacharya Ashram. <laughs> if they stay in the ashram all their life, that's good. If they marry, well then they're qualified husbands who can cook. <laughs> this yesterday's lunch was cooked by the Brahmacharya Ashram. And I walked around and asked everyone, and they said, oh, this was the best. I said, even better than Gopal Gurus? <laughs> Most of them, well, I, I won't answer. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, about the Sankirtan scores, I have been informed of what I suspected. <laughs> that the men's scores, like Prima and Krishna, were merged, their individual scores were merged into teams. So you, but if you pull them out, if you extract the men's scores of the top men distributors from the teams, then they won! <laughs> Hamish is opting to spend some time. We'll see how long it goes. 
and you were much like, I whether it's all his life, a few years, but as I said, it's a win-win situation for everyone. <laughs> so what are the four rules? And what to do every day? Your new name is Srivas Sharan. <laughs> Srivas Sharan means the shelter of Srivas or the Panchatattva. Run, go, my. of the land development here is headed by Rangomai. She has a natural ability for dealing with land and growing food and we're very proud of her dedication to those activities. What are the four rules? And what to do every day? Do you want another name where you like Rungo Mai? <laughs> <laughs> she says she'll take what I give her, but I'm not going to give her a Rungo Mai. <laughs> We have a beautiful name for you. Your new name is Kamala Muki. <laughs> Kamala Muki is a name for Srimati Radharani. It means lotus faced. <laughs> Rajat. Rajat and his wife. Annabelle are based in Hamilton and they have a house, big house, which they are letting devotees use as an outreach center, mantra house in Hamilton. We're very grateful for their generosity. They're living in the house too, but it's a big house and it makes a very nice center for Hamilton. We're grateful for their charitable and devotional spirit. What are the four rules? And what to do every day? Your new name is Rasotsava. <laughs> Rasotsava means the festival of the Rasalila. <laughs> Jules.
So Jules has been in the Bhadrasena's ashram for how long? One year. One year. And then the Brahmacharya ashram for how long? One year. He came to Bhakti in a very interesting way, in tandem. You know what that means? Yes. And both persons, he and his partner, decided they wanted to practice Bhakti, but on their own. It happens like that. So now his former partners in the ladies ashram and he's in the Brahmacharya ashram. What are the four rules? No meditating, no intoxication, no gambling, no insisting. And what to do every day? Thinking 60 rounds of the Hare Krishna Mahama Chan Japan. It's very special when someone from France takes initiation because it's been for the past 40 years or so, it's been a very difficult place for bhakti. There was a big boom in France during the 70s and then due to various obstacles and setbacks, things went into decline. And so it's, it's starting to Get, so a little spark is happening there now, but anywhere in the world where someone from France becomes a serious devotee, this is a great accomplishment. <laughs> Some countries in Europe are a bit tough. Because Europe can be a bit stodgy in a certain way. That is flexible as Kiwis. Places, just like we have Floor from the Netherlands, that's been a tough place also. <laughs> Scandinavia, except for Finland, it's been tough. So when these devotees from such countries come forth, it's very much a great event. So what are the four rules? I already asked you guys. I just want to make sure. <laughs> All right, we'll give you your new name. <laughs> your new name is another name for Bhishma Deva. Gangeya. <laughs> Gangeya means the son of the Ganga. That's Bhishma Devi. His mother is Ganga Devi. Just like you call Arjuna Kunteya, the son of Kunti. So we have now Gangeya Das. His grace, Gangeya Prabhu. Hey! Proceed. Okay, so we go through these matches, you can make all this long. Gosh, we're shouting the kids out in the background. Uh, maybe you're going to throw the grains, you're going to hold them like that. Before you can take a picture of grains, every time I go to Swaha, you're going to have a fire. Throw them into the fire, hold them with your right hand. Right hand. Yep. Yeah. So just repeat after me. Yeah. Oh, Akyana, Akyana, Samana, 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 Shalakaya, Chakshu, Lord Militam, Kena, Tasmai, Shri Gurave Namaha, Swaha, 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 Shri Chaitanya, Manovishtam, Swapitam, 
Yena Bhutale, Swayam Bhupa, Kedamayam, Dadati Swa, Adanti Kam, Swaha, 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 Vandeham, Sri Guru, Sri Yuta, Padakamalam, Sri Guran, Vaishnavam Cha, Sri Rupam, Sagrajatam, Sahagana, Raghunatham Vitam, Tam Sajivam, Sadvaitam, Sabadutam, Harijana, Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha Krishna Padan, Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakampitam Swaha 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 Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Uttale Shrimate Deva Rita Swami Prachari Purvadaksham Cha Bhakta Chara Purvinata Karata Tapi Kawinyam Yasya Sabe Chatang Maha Swaha 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 Swaha, 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 